So the, the, why can't Marvel and DC just let go of legacy characters and move on to some lineage types? Your video on Isad Ribic's old Captain Marvel got me thinking down this path. Best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, it might surprise you, as a guy who makes all these videos talks all the time, um, that, uh, you know, if you want to define my true, absolute definition of hell, um, no, it's not Arby's, but you're close. Um, no, it's it's getting my hair cut. I, I can't stand it. And I can't stand it because it's I've got to sit trapped in one place while somebody messes around with my head. And I just want the haircut. And for whatever reason... The popular, you know, the, the popular belief is that people who are going to get their haircut want to have a conversation with the person who is cutting the hair. And by contrast, I absolutely do not want that at all. I do not want the conversation. I don't want to talk to anybody. Like the perfect uh, place. And, and here's the thing that I'll get. So there's places like uh, knockouts and sports clips and those kinds of, of, of places have come up. And they're like, we specialize in, in haircuts for guys. And they put, they like, we've got sports in here. We've got TVs running and sports on the TV. So come in here and you can see some sports. But um, I, more often than not, when I've gone in those places, the volume is down and the people are still talking to you. And I'm like, I, you know what? I don't really even care about sports because more than half the time it's baseball you're showing up there and I can't stand it. But even then, I will sit there and I will watch baseball with the most mind-numbing commentary possible on that TV rather than listen to this person trying to make small talk about, oh, you have kids? I have kids. Oh, yeah, my kids like kids. Uh, they play in the yard. I'm going to do a barbecue tomorrow. You Do you barbecue? What, what, what do you like to barbecue? I'm like, Jesus, shut up. I just, just cut my hair. And for me, I want to help them out by saying, like, I, I don't want to be here. I, you want to get paid. I will pay you your full amount, full dollar amount. I'm, I'm, you're, you're not, I'm not paying you by the hour. I'm paying the full everything to just get the haircut and get the hell out as fast as humanly possible. So make it easier on yourself, you know, churn through. I, I will tip you based on how quickly you get me out of here. And that that's, that's the relationship and the, the thing I want to have with you right now. Just, just <laughs> get me in, get me out, please. Uh, you're killing me here. I, I don't know. I, I, it's just, this is, uh, this is my hell is, is cutting hair. Anyway, you didn't uh, come to this channel to listen to me talk about that. So let's, uh, let's get to a viewer question here. Characters aging up and moving on. Okay. Well, enough about haircuts anyway. So, uh, let's get, so I, I did a little teaser. Now let's get to, uh, get to the, the actual, uh, question from the viewer here. And it goes, uh, why can't, uh, comic book fans just move on from flag bearers like Steve Rogers? No pun intended. Tony Stark and Steve Rogers should be in their 90s now, but the time doesn't have to pass in the same way, but really, though. Isad Ribic's old Captain Marvel is actually on point. I can't connect with the immortal person that is Tony Stark. My dad has always said that's how it works. DC is gods wanting to be humans, and Marvel is humans striving for God status. Well, they got it. They're immortal. Death has no meaning except to the extras of the Marvel Universe, and even then, it barely applies. I'm still going to read Marvel anyway. The world needs heroes after all. But let the mantle of Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man, or anyone really actually have a new generation take over and have a long run that goes 50 plus issues. The new status quo would then make the scarcity of the early issues revitalize the comics, collecting hobby with the new Silver Age. The new Silver Age will allow the comics to reflect the movies, which as you've pointed out in the past, will allow for an immersion point for a wider audience of the movies. Have literally any character get into a 50 plus issue run for that matter. We've solved a lot with a legacy numbering system. Bring the stories back to street level. King of Space is hard to connect with. Start emulating manga and get the biggest titles onto newsstand shelves. Once you prove the concept, more titles will find space being made for them. Okay, that's a lot of ideas in one mail. So um, let's, uh, let's kind of piece it to, you know, one step at a time. Here's the problem with aging the characters up. or basically saying, hey, they're old enough, let's go. The problem is you've gone six, seven decades with the current status quo of they don't age. So now if you're suddenly going to age them, it's weird. You don't, you, they're not, that, that's not what has happened. They, the, the, 
comics for a long period of time are based on this time doesn't really pass. It's immortal. The characters are always there for you. Like Ronald McDonald is always creepy old clown terrorizing children and making them eat his meat. Uh, it didn't come out right. But uh, phrasing. But that, that is what Marvel and DC have defined. These are not, it's fiction. And these characters live forever. They're, they're you know, timeless. They're iconic. If you want to do it where the characters age and then get replaced, you're like you're picking a point in time, like now, and saying, okay, now now age matters, right now. If suddenly Tony Stark was 90, you'd be like, hey, what happened from ages 40, whatever he is, 40-ish to, to 90? We missed all those years. Were those good years? Are they boring years? I, I don't know, but you know what, what happened to that time period? We, why didn't we see it? It's, it's just strange. I think... You know, one of the best things maybe they could do is create or bring back the ultimate line, bring back the uh, whatever DC's equivalent of the ultimate line is, and then run these iconic characters like you described. Have them there, have them age, have them ultimately take, taken over like what Eric Larson did with Savage Dragon and Malcolm. You, you know, it's okay. Go ahead and do that. But you're going to have to almost start a new imprint. You're going to have to start from scratch and say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. And I think that could be successful. It would certainly pull in a different audience. And who knows, over time, that may be become more successful. And then you can kind of start to taper down the original comic line. But generally speaking, and I'm guessing most people who respond to this video are going to, to say this, people don't want to see them age. They just want to see adventures with these characters that are that are fictional, that are they're intended to be timeless. Not necessarily immortal, just timeless. So that that but anyway, that's that's my response to that. I think that's the problem with what you're describing, is that it's you know, it's been a long time and they haven't aged, and you, you can't suddenly just turn on the clock and say, okay, now we're caring about it. It, it would be it would be weird. Um, then let's see, you you say um, you know the new the new Silver Age comics. Yeah, I mean there, that is a way to actually make some of these eras valuable, but it's also going to take a lot of patience. What I find, and, and no offense to you know you who wrote me in this letter, but what I find kind of sad and tragic is you're like, let the comics have a long run that goes 50 plus issues. And they, that's depressing. <laughs> Sorry, I, I mean, no offense, but that's 50 issues is a long run. God, that's how far, that's where we've, that's where we've landed. Um, that's sad. You know, 50 issues is like four years if your comic was coming out monthly. And I mean, for God's sake, there was Chris Claremont was doing stuff where he like subplots would take four years to develop. I mean, I, it, it's it's sad to me that uh, 50 issues is considered a long run. Now, I don't I don't disagree with you, you know, with the way comics are now. Yeah, that's about right. 50 issues uh, is a long run. But that that. I'm sorry. That's that's just it's depressing for you to put it out that way. Um, and then you say, uh, you know, bring back stories. Street level, King of Space is hard to connect with. Um, I, I mean, so what? What's interesting there is I, there's room for both. But what I do think is is awkward is when you've got like Venom, and Venom is you know, yeah, even though it's an alien symbiote, it's still like the the character's big popularity came from at least more street level kind of stories. And now he's like part of a collective of space symbiotes and he's transferring consciousness across. I mean, like, there comes a point where um, it feels like some of the characters that should be street level have gone wacky. I, I'll tell you, I know, I've been asked to, for me to do a retrospective on uh, Operation Galactic Storm, the, uh, the Avengers crossover. I remember, and, and this will irritate a lot of comic purists, I never loved stories where Captain America was running around in space, um, including like the Kree Skull War or the Korvok Saga or some of these They're good stories. But I always felt like it was weird, like Captain America is up there running around with a shield and kind of chainmail armor in a spaceship. And it's like, I, I, you, you, sh you should be um, feeling awkward and out of your element up there. I think that that's, it, it just doesn't, it feels weird for uh, Captain America to be running around like that. It does not, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right, uh, but they would do it anyway. And then the last thing, um, start emulating manga, get the biggest titles onto newsstand shelves. Absolutely. Absolutely. You should, but I'll toss it out to the listeners. Now, do you, uh, what do you think? Should, should comics go ahead and, and start the clock and age these characters and replace them? Is that the answer or, or is there a better way to do it? Or what, like, what, what do you think? Um, do, does, does it become hard for people to say, to think about these characters like gods? Like, uh, what, what is your, what is your perspective? I'm interested to hear from you, so leave a comment below. 
thank you for writing in. If you want to write in, uh, the email is in the description to the video. And thanks for listening.